How the heck are you supposed to make GA4 work for PPC? Welcome to PPC Zone, July 2024. I'm your host, Jill Saskin Gales. I use the pronoun she and her. I'm a Google Ads coach, ex Googler, and the founder of Inside Google Ads. I created PPC Zone in 2022 to elevate new perspectives and insights in our industry. PPC Zone is sponsored by PPC Live and Inside Google Ads. PPC Live hosts in-person events, bringing real people together to solve real problems with real solutions. Go to ppc.live to get your ticket to the next event. That's ppc.live. Inside Google Ads is the training program you need to become a Google Ads expert. Get 20% off your first month or first year with code PPCZONE. Go to learn.jill.ca to learn more. That's learn.jyll.ca. Our first speaker in the zone has been a paid search specialist since 2006. She's a complete data, data nerd, her words, not mine, and perhaps one of the very few who loves the new GA4. Don't hold it against her because she's experienced in the travel and e-commerce industries working with budgets of all sizes. Now, she's here to share her perspective on GA4 tips for PPC. Please welcome Tuha Wright. Hi. So um, today I'm going to go through the reports that I use when I am looking at paid search um, data, as it were. Just a little bit about me. I've worked in paid search since 2006, and I've been freelancing since 2018 as a digital seamstress. And you're probably thinking, if I'm working in paid search, why am I talking about GA4? And as Jill said, I am a data nerd. I do love data. And any excuse to get into GA4, I'm there. So what I find is when people get into GA4, the first mistake they make is they're not asking the questions, as it were. They're just hoping that they'll go into GA4 and hoping that it will have all the magic answers for them. But the reality is, is you get the best out of it if you have questions in mind. So some questions you may have are which channel is driving the most users or which channel are driving the most users and which are generating the most revenue. You can actually interchange that word channel with campaign. So I'll give you some examples of um, data that I get. So the first report that I would use is the user acquisition report. So this report tells you how many users came from each of the channels. Now, one thing that I've noticed in, in the last few years is that people don't realize that there's this blue plus button. And when you click on this blue plus button, um, you can add another dimension. And adding another dimension will give you a bit more depth into the data and you can find out a bit more, bit more about perhaps a specific campaign that you're running. One thing to note is that um, Google will often talk about dimensions and scope and there's certain metrics that you can only view with certain dimensions. So when you're using the user acquisition report, you want to use any dimensions that has the first user uh, in front of it. So for instance, if I wanted to look at which campaigns drove um, users, I would add first user campaign as my dimension column. The second report that I use often is the traffic acquisition report. So this is um, this report tells you how much traffic each of the channel drives. So if you are running paid search, for instance, you can compare how much traffic you're sending compared to organic search or organic social or even paid social. And just to give you that idea of how you fit in with all the other channels. And again, so with the with traffic, it's all about sessions. So if you're going to add any other dimensions with that magic blue button, then use the session campaign dimension. My third report is the attribution path. So this is found in the advertising section on the left hand side. And I often use this to see how 
different channels play and what touch points they have in a customer's journey. So the line 42 that I've highlighted here in this screenshot, um, this is where if you'd looked at that traffic report, it would have said that organic search had won um, that key event. However, paid search played a part for um, has played a part in that journey. And so for me, that would say, well, I'm not going to discount paid search because it actually um, it actually helped drive traffic to the website. The next report on the same section is the attribution model. And this looks at comparing the last click model with the data-driven model. And I like to use this report to, to kind of get a feel of how I should split the budget. So from this report, I would say that paid search, organic social and organic shopping actually drives revenue, um, has more value in driving revenues than it actually does if you use the last click model. And so I would make sure that there is sufficient budget to keep running those channels. Okay, so those are my three reports. So the user acquisition report, the traffic acquisition report, and the attribution model. So I hope you found that useful. Thank you so much, Tuha, for sharing your unique perspective and insights with us in the zone. If you'd like to connect with Tuha Wright, you can find her on LinkedIn. Our next event will be on August 13th, 2024 at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. UK, 8.30 p.m. India time. We look forward to seeing you there on YouTube, LinkedIn, TikTok, or Instagram. To learn more about PPC Zone and our wonderful speakers today, or to apply to speak at an upcoming event, visit ppc.zone. I'm your host, Jill Saskin Gales. You can find all of us on LinkedIn and be sure to follow me to stay up to date on future events. I look forward to seeing you next time in the zone.